This is a story about police raids, the far right, and techno. Welcome to Tbilisi, Georgia's capital. There is a booming music scene here, built by the country's pro-Western youth, with clubs that are a safe space for LGBT people. We are free and we need to be free. But they're facing resistance from powerful forces. So when 10,000 ravers took to the streets, dancing became a political act. I wanted to find out what drove their protest and who is backing violent right-wing extremists who showed up in force in a nation torn between Russia and Europe. This is the story of Georgia's rave revolution. Underneath the Dinamo football stadium in the heart of Tbilisi sits Georgia's biggest electronic music club, Bassiani. This is Bassiani, actually, the, the main dance floor. It's a former swimming pool turned dance floor and a rare place in Tbilisi where LGBT people are welcome. Sviat Gelbachiani is one of the club's founders. We are preparing for the biggest night since the raids. Uh, so we are now setting up the, the equipment and sound system. This is the raid he was talking about. In May, hundreds of police stormed Vasiani and another LGBT-friendly club. They say it was part of a three-month operation in a crackdown on drugs. The special forces raided right here. And can you imagine when you realize that in the, in the darkness, it's 1 a.m., and there's somebody with machine guns, real machine guns, and with masks standing next to you and screaming to you. I don't know how it will preserve in our mind. <laughs> it's not a secret that the clubbing scene is associated with drugs. Can you see why the police turned out? Drugs are not created and produced here in the country. All of them are, are imported. So they should target the borders, not the people on the dance floor or, or the owners or the, or the club itself. Zviat and around 70 others from the scene were detained outside the club. Yeah, this is the place over there where I was detained by eight policemen. They were like literally dragging me out with my hand and with my legs. And there was no air in the middle of circle. I was asking them to let me down. We asked our friends and the whole city to help us and stand with us. Within hours, thousands of people had taken to the streets to stand up for their freedom to express themselves. And soon, the protests took the form of a raid. We felt the, the power in front of the parliament. When I raised my head like, and saw those like 20,000 people who were dancing, um, I was almost crying. Activist Anna Subiliani was among the protesters. I was dancing with big anger, big protest to the government, uh, and all my movements were showing it. But it was Anna's dance on top of this memorial that angered far-right groups, who turned up in force. This is George Chelidze, leader of the fascist group Georgian National Unity. We wanted to find out what was motivating them and why they found the rave outside parliament so offensive. We arranged to meet by a metro station. Last time I met these guys, one of them had an air pistol on him. So I'm not quite sure what to expect from this meeting. 
Come on, Joubert. Hello. But their leader, George Chalidze, wasn't there. Uh, you, you rang me? Did you call me? Yeah, yeah I, I, I spoke to you. So, so, could you please turn off the camera? I would like to first uh, chat with you. Okay, okay. They didn't want to be interviewed. So we had quite an interesting situation now. I, uh, I met with the far-right uh, group. They said that uh, their leaders were detained. We can see that there are plainclothes police also in the area. And the far-right group, they said that it's not safe for them uh, to talk to us. So uh, I, can, I can clearly identify like some of the policemen they're here in this area, over there in dark glasses, in black t-shirt. Further there, just over there, you see. We called the police to find out what happened to George. Ringing. Nino, hi, this is uh, Rayhan. They told us he was temporarily held. Yes. But that night he contacted us and said he was detained because the police didn't want him to speak to the BBC. Shoes? We arranged to meet him the next day in his apartment. No okay, thank you. This is our flag. What, what, what? Uh, this is uh, Georgia National Unit. Yes. He showed us his tattoos. This is not, this is, this is not uh, German. This is Georgian. Do you realize that the symbols that you're showing us, some people might find it really offensive? If uh, with National Socialists uh, associated, no problem. No, uh, if it's associated with Nazism, it's okay. No problem. No problem. What did you find so offensive about this protest? Why did you decide to turn up? It was a clear, clear leftist provocation. They uh, did not protest, only the police raid. They were demanding drug legalization. Also, uh, LGBT uh, propagandists, we showed them and everyone else that uh, agenda belongs in this country uh, to uh, nationality mind society, to, to the Georgian nation. Although Georgia's group is small and amateur, they weren't the only right-wing extremists that turned up at the protest. Look at these gays, look at these drug dealers. We saw the, all these hatreds. We wanted to find out why these far-right groups have been gaining confidence to stand against the liberals and who is backing them. These are just recently created and established organizations. During this uh, uh, counter-demonstration, they were very aggressive. Anti-corruption organization Transparency International has been researching the rise of groups with neo-Nazi ideology in Georgia. One of the very active movement is the Georgian March. And uh, in Georgian March, we have uh, lots of NGOs and individuals. Some of them get uh, funding from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Russia. Russia and Georgia fought a war 10 years ago, and relations are still tense. Georgia broke away from the USSR in 1991, but Russia has tried to maintain influence. 20% of Georgia's internationally recognized territory is still under Russian control. We still have very strong uh, Russian propaganda in our country, uh, but still people feel that Russians are our enemy, they are not our friends. Some Georgians believe that Russia is using groups like Georgian March to counter pro-Western views and to spread ultra-conservative values in its neighbor state. They even uh, kind of beat one of our supporters. We asked the leader of Georgian March if these allegations of Russian funding were true. This is one of your leaders. I showed him Transparency International's report. It's not uh, our leader. It just shows clearly that where the funding comes from, that it's directly linked to the Russian uh, foreign it's a, ministry. It, it is not a mistake. This is you sitting with uh, yes. Lord Kipanitsev. Yes. It's about not Georgian the March. It's uh, uh, other parties, political parties, and we sit uh, near table. It's nothing more. Yeah. Не приверженец российской политики в Грузии. Я сам знаю, что такое российская оккупация. Это губит мою страну, можно так сказать. 
but the source of Sandro's inspiration surprised me. As well as the far right, the LGBT scene is also under pressure from the powerful Georgian Orthodox Church. Just three days after the ravers took to the streets, thousands went on a march established to counter International Day Against Homophobia. They call it Family Purity Day, and the anti-LGBT message is clear. They call us different people with uh, earrings or with a... Uh, different hair color. Different hair color. And look what happened in 2013, after a few LGBT people tried to stage a demonstration. That's the LGBT activists hiding inside the bus. It's been attacked by a mob led by Orthodox priests. The Georgian Orthodox Church is keen to distance itself from far-right groups, but their attitude towards the LGBT community is similar. LGBT is propaganda, is propaganda, narco-politics, is liberalization, and Campaigners say Georgian drug policy targets users, not dealers, and it has stricter drug laws than in Western Europe. If you're found with one pill of ecstasy, you'd go to jail from five to eight years. If it's the active substance over one gram, like six pills of ecstasy, for instance, you'd go to jail from eight to 20 years or lifetime. Pata Sabelashvili is an LGBT rights activist and campaigns to ease drug laws. We don't want people to abuse drugs. We know other ways to help, and we know what helps, not the prison. We wanted to ask the police about the existing drug laws and whether sending special forces to Bastiani was justified. So we are targeting the drugs wherever they, they are sold. It was a search based on a court warrant to identify the drug dealing in the clubs. So we think it was justified. People in Western Europe might be horrified when they see how the police turned up in, with machine guns at nightclubs. Do you think it's the best approach that you can use given that Georgia is striving to become part of the EU? I know a number of raids in Berlin clubs, in Ibiza clubs and stuff like that. When the police is searching for the drugs, it's justified. Together we dance, together we stand. We dance together and we fight together. World famous DJs have spoken in a video of solidarity with the ravers' cause. Be strong. Stand up and fight. We are Bassiani. And back at Bassiani, the biggest event since police stormed the clubs has started. As part of this 24-hour party, activists are hosting talks about Georgia's drug laws. When you can threaten someone with eight years in jail for an empty syringe, then you have real power. What these people are saying is that this country's oppressive drugs policy is the last remaining tool used by the government to control people's freedom. And talk of Russian influence is never far away. Russia has been engaged in a global propaganda effort to associate anything liberal, anything Western, with like sexual depravity and moral corruption. And in Georgia, they have allies in the church and they have allies in these right-wing street movements. The police raids and intimidation from far-right groups have turned dancing into a political act in Georgia. After police came here, uh, we're still dancing here, we're still here. There's still this post-Soviet stigma that still keeps prevailing and uh, our generation, that makes me really proud, we're fighting it. So we are free and we need to be free. If we dance together, we fight together. If we 
dance together, we fight together. If we dance together,